Friends, let's join in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, once more draw near to us as the good news of Easter is made known to us anew. Open our hearts that we too may be surprised and enlivened and made new. Hear now the words of my mouth. May they be blessed by your spirit. May we hear and receive, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the gospel lesson for today comes from John's gospel. This is from the 20th chapter, the first 18 verses, John's description of Easter morning. Early on the first day of the week when it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and she saw that the tomb stone had been removed from the front of the grave. She ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. And she said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Simon Peter came following him, and he went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head. But it was not lined with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples returned to their home. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away the Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to the others and say to them, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that Jesus had said these things to her. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On Easter, it's more important to remember the faithful good news that Mary Magdalene proclaimed rather than just remember the worried questions that she asked. You know the story. Early on Easter morning, Mary is going to the tomb where Jesus had been laid only to discover in horror that the body is no longer there. And so she runs back to find Simon Peter And she names her worried question for the first time. The Lord has been taken from the tomb, and we don't know where they've laid him. So Peter and another disciple go to the cemetery. They find the tomb empty, and then they return home. But Mary stays behind, distraught in the cemetery. And angels ask her about her tears. And a second time, she offers her question, My Lord has been taken from the tomb. I don't know where they've laid him. The risen Christ appears, yet is not recognized by Mary. So to him, she says a version of what she's already said twice before. If you've taken him away, then tell me where you've laid him. And at last comes the joyous finale, Jesus calling Mary by name. And she recognizes him at last. And she runs back to the disciples with her first original words, spoken that Easter morning when she finally says, I have seen the Lord. A missing body is now a living body. Christ is risen. This is understandably the main focus of Easter, this resurrection from the dead. 
Jesus Christ is no longer in a borrowed tomb, but was seen by Mary Magdalene there in the cemetery, and he later appeared to the disciples behind the locked doors of the upper room. He walked on the road to Emmaus and joined up with two disciples there for that journey home and for their dinner meal. He later called out to the disciples who were fishing on the Sea of Galilee and invited them to join him in a breakfast on the shore. And in the end, Jesus even met his disciples on a high hill in Galilee, and he spoke to them before ascending into heaven. These are all the Easter resurrection stories that we tell. These are the stories about the one who was dead, but now is alive. But I don't want us to overlook an important part of the Easter good news. As miraculous as it is that Christ is alive, it's even more consequential to realize that he is alive everywhere. That he now moves beyond the usual limits of space and time as we experience life. The Jesus of ancient Galilee has become Christ, the Savior of the world. The message of Easter is not about resuscitation, a resurrection of one body. It is about a new reality, a new state of being that's been revealed to the world and which includes us. And that, that is the Easter good news. Now to get this idea across to you, I'm going to need some help from a contemporary humorist named Fran Lebowitz. Leibowitz is a 70-year-old public speaker who's known for her somewhat crotchety, opinionated writings about life in America today. You know, a typical New Yorker. A year or two ago, she was asked about life in the big city, and Leibowitz immediately began to complain that so many people today don't know how to walk on the sidewalks anymore. As she put it, New York City has millions of people And everyone used to know that if you're walking on the sidewalk toward other people, then you move a little bit and they move a little bit and that's how everybody's still alive at the end of the day. But now, she says, people don't do that. People don't watch where they're going because they're on their phones or because they live in a world of one. Sometimes, she said, she would see someone not paying attention and think to herself, I'm just going to let them walk right into me. And they do. And they're annoyed, and then she'd look them in the eye and say, hmm, imagine that, other people on the sidewalk. Isn't that astonishing? Leibowitz decided she would write a manifesto to advise all those inattentive people, and the title of her brochure would be, Pretend It's a City. And I like that. It's a little bit snarky and has an urban attitude to it, but there's truth in the title. Pretend it's a city, a city where there are other people on the sidewalk and where we all have to get places, and everyone will get through the day better if they all just remembered that. So what does the gospel of Leibowitz have to do with the gospel of John today? Easter is not just about what happened to Jesus' body. Resurrection is not resuscitation. Yes, Jesus is alive and he's no longer in the tomb, but that means he's out and about. It means he's on the loose. He's frankly anywhere and everywhere. So look up from your phones. Break out of your self-absorbed world of one. The Christian manifesto proclaims, wherever you are, believe it is Christ's city. Believe it is God's city. Believe it is now God's world. In the words of Paul Tillich, it is a new creation. It is a new being, a new state of things. And so accept that. Enter into it. Find yourself in this new Easter world and come alive because it's God's city now. There's another wise theologian, Karl Barth, put it this way. Easter is the breaking in of a new world through the existence of the man Jesus, this bearer of victory over death and the destroyer of the burden of human sin. And the early Christian community saw not only a supernatural continuation of his previous life, but also an entirely new life of the exalted Christ that was simultaneously the beginning of a new world once and for all. 
We've always known this is God's world, but honestly, we tend to take that fact for granted. We think our name is on the planet's deed of ownership. But Easter snaps us out of this delusion. The tomb is empty and Christ is now on the loose. Something miraculous has been revealed and we're not in charge. It's God's world. It's Christ's world. It's God's city now. And that's why it was wonderful to hear from Bala and Hunter and Chinua this morning to see images from South America and India. And remember, we're not the only ones doing church on Easter morning. So far today, there have already been sunrise services in New Zealand and in Tizé, France. They've already shouted Alleluia at the Balaka CCAP Church in Malawi and St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome. The risen Christ isn't limited just to Pittsburgh. This gives us hope. As we too shout our Alleluias, as we too work for justice, as we too pray for peace. Because the one who from the cross could say, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing, must also be there amid the violence in Myanmar and Palestine, amid the, the floral memorials that have been set up after the senseless gun violence in Atlanta and Colorado and California, and must be there with the grieving family of the courageous Capitol Police officer in Washington. The one whom no grave could contain must also be there now on the borders as families seek asylum, as children sleep on flimsy mats, as huddled masses yearning to be free wait to hear our answer when they've asked for hospitality. The one who called Mary by name has to be there in Minneapolis as crowds insist on remembering George Floyd's name and call for racial justice to be honored in this country. The one whose appearance lifted the weary hearts of disciples trudging to Emmaus has to be there in hospitals that are still full of COVID patients and nursing homes with elderly residents still isolated from their loved ones. Christ is no longer bound by time and place. Last year for Easter, We were frankly still in shock as the pandemic's powerful force rolled over us. And so we gathered remotely that Sunday, but we were like Mary, standing dazed and confused at the tomb, mostly asking questions, even as we heard again the old, old story. And this year, we are still gathering remotely, and we've endured a hard year full of disruptions and loss and major stress. But my prayer is that the Easter resurrection stories will reach you right where you are. We who have lived in quarantine isolation, what better news is there than knowing that Christ appears beside those he loves even behind locked doors? We who have also trudged down lonely roads, grieving, tired, separated from our families, What better news is there than believing that Christ literally walks beside us every step of the way and longs to call us together. We who have struggled to get back to work, whether that involves Simon Peter long ago fishing on the Sea of Galilee, or whether it involves us logging onto remote work computers, or school classes done on Zoom, or bundling up in PPE for once again another shift at a nursing home. What better news is there than having the resurrected Christ himself call out to us, inviting him to join us for a communion meal and reminding us that he is right there beside us. After Mary Magdalene three times asked her questions about where Jesus' body had gone, she finally said something original, something faithful and joyful. She said, I have seen the Lord Everything else became secondary at that point. There were no more questions. There were no more replaying of the images of his death on the cross and the hurried burial in the tomb. Right then, Mary encountered the risen Christ. And she could breathe again. She could trust and hope again. She became the first Easter preacher of the good news. And she told the world, I have seen the Lord. 
to look around and open your eyes of faith. The risen Christ is near. In every situation you can imagine, in every place and time, especially where there is trouble or grief or fear or sin, Christ is present. So lift up your downcast eyes. Quit being distracted by your devices because it's Christ's world now. It's God's city now. It's Easter. Christ is risen, and we have seen the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.